Hey guys, this week I'm going to be sharing about the three different types of show at website galleries that you can use. Simple, carousel, and tiled. I'll show you some examples, I'll show you how to set them up and all the different control options that they have. Show it has some really great capabilities when it comes to displaying beautiful high-res images, so I want to make sure that you take advantage of them. So let me flip my screen around and share it and we'll get down to business. Okay, so let me show you just briefly the three types of galleries you can have and show it. So I just have my Harper template open. I have um, a different canvas for each gallery type. So on this first one here, I have a tiled gallery. So this is where you can set the number of columns and the spacing between images so that it will grow. And I'm just gonna show you the option. So this is the tiled one. So I have this one set to three columns and all the images just uh, you know feed into that. <clears throat> the second type is a sliding gallery. Um, so for this one, it's just the images are going to go across the page. So let's go to the second option just to show you what it is. So this is a sliding gallery. <clears throat> and there's lots of cool different settings that you can do, but the main gist is it slides across the screen. And the third option is, I actually have this third option as a sliding, so I'm going to change it to show you, is just a simple gallery. So if we do that, publish it just to show you. A simple gallery is just showing one image at a time. So I'm going to click that one. And then I should be able to click through these images one by one. They will appear. So those are the three different types, tiled, uh, carousel, and simple. Now, let's go back and look up how you would set up a tiled gallery. So what I do is I, you know, you add your gallery in down here, right? All right, so there's the gallery. <coughs> Then what you're going to do is scale it to be however big you want. Usually I do it, um, you know, most of the page width. If you want to do it full width, you could do it full width. And then if you click gallery and go on the right, go to size and position, you could set the horizontal locking to be full width. And then if you do that, look at the difference here. So I'm going to reload the page. I'm going to open that gallery. <clears throat> now it should be like a full width gallery that loads. And those are huge images. So I generally don't like it that big, but some of you might like that. So that's how you would do that. You want it full width. <clears throat> um, so I'm just going to not lock it. And I'm going to uh, change the width and center it back. <laughs> so let's look at the settings for this tile gallery. So over here, well, first of all, I'll start with the canvas. So the canvas can be really small. And the most important thing about setting up a tile gallery is that you want to change the canvas type to be grow with content because depending on how many pictures you have will determine how big it is going to um, make this canvas. So that's the only type of canvas type that you would do for tiles is make sure that it's um, set, the canvas itself is set to grow with content. All right, um, <clears throat> then when you uh, actually you add the gallery in, you click it, let's look at the settings for it. So over here I have the type set to tiles gallery. I can specify how many columns I want now it's four, but I like three. You can specify the padding, which is the, the space between the different images. You can create a border actually for the image and you could change the border color. I don't have it set to be anything right now, but you could change that. So I'm just gonna undo that. Um, okay, full screen view. So this you can't preview in here. You have to actually preview it in an actual gallery. So the background gallery would be if someone clicks, or the background color would be if someone clicks on an individual image, what do you want that background color to be. So let's go back to this gallery. Let's say I'm going to click on this image, okay? And it's going to pop up and be bigger. So this is the background color that you're specifying. That's what this is. You want to say that I want the background color when I zoom in on an image, I want it to be white. And I always like lower the opacity to at least 90 because um, I want people to know that, wait a minute, I didn't go somewhere else. I didn't go to a different site. This is the same site. It's just the image is blown up. And then you can, ch can change <clears throat> the controls color as well up here on the right. So that's what this is, the controls color, that little X up there. So I'm going to X out of that, and that's how you do the settings for a tile gallery. Um, a note, what I always do is have a back to galleries um, button at the bottom that I lock to the bottom edge lock. <clears throat> so um, to do this, you just would add a text layer and have it say back to galleries or whatever. Um, you set the click action over here on the right, um, you, well, first of all, you want to go to size and position first, and you want to vertically lock it to the bottom because as the gallery grows, 
you know, you don't want this button to get lost. You're going to lock it to the bottom. So you would lock it to the bottom. You would select it, go to click actions, and then set it to go back to wherever the canvas is that has your buttons. Also, just make sure that as you're setting up this tile gallery on desktop, that you're also doing it on mobile. And it's the same, you know, format. So this is the canvas on mobile where I have the tile gallery set up. It's going to be, you know, different settings. Um, so you can specify the number of tiles that you want or columns that you want on the mobile view. So I have it clicked. I'm going to go on right to gallery settings. So for mobile, I only do two columns because it tends to be, you know, not as wide, um, but the same thing. You can do the padding, the background color, if someone clicks an image, yada, yada. <clears throat> All right. So let's look at the second gallery type, which is lighting. And I always like to have my gallery side by side so I know what I'm working on. <clears throat> All right. So for this lighting gallery, I'm going to um, delete it first of all and show you how to do this. So actually... Okay, so when you first add the gallery, it's not going to look like this. Like, I've changed some parameters in here to make it a little bit fancy, if you will. So let me show you how I did this. So I'll just actually turn this layer off. I'm going to add a gallery, pretending like we're starting from scratch. Um, so for the canvas size for this one, I would do an initial height of 600 and set the type to be normal. Um, <clears throat> that's what I do. If you want to do something different, you're more than welcome to, but that's generally what I do. So I'm going to make it about this width. Actually, I'm going to make it go to the width of the buttons that I have down here. I have a next button. All right, so I'm going to add some images in. All right, so by default, it's going to use the simple type. So you have to click it, go over on the right to gallery settings, and change the gallery type from simple to sliding, okay? And then by default, it's not going to have any, that my mobile, it's not going to have any spacing in between the images. So I want to change that. So on the desktop, I'm going to say I want space to be two pixels. And the same with mobile. I'm going to make it two pixels. All right. Now, um, if you want it to just auto advance, like you don't have any buttons to have it go forward, you could set this. So this just means that there doesn't have to be any next or previous buttons. It'll just go on its own. But I always like to have buttons so that people can manually choose when they want to look at the next picture. Um, so let's say that you want to make it um, more like the one that I had earlier where it's, um, you see how some of these, or the images to the left and right are smaller and they have a lower opacity. Um, by default, it's not gonna do that. Um, so by default, it's gonna all be the same size, all be the same opacity. So to change that, you click the gallery on the right <clears throat> under, let's see, uh, yeah, settings, gallery settings. If you go to unselect images, customize, <clears throat> you can specify how you want the unselected images to be. So by, you know, the middle image is considered the selected image, and then the ones to the left and right are considered the unselected images. So I want to say that I want to change the opacity of these unselected ones to be 50%, okay? So now you'll see that it'll update it. So now the two images on the left and right are at lower opacity than the one in the middle. I also want to blur them maybe. So I'm going to say 50% or 20 pixels, I guess that's the most you can do pixel thing. All right. And then let's say I want to make it a little bit smaller. So I'm going to say 50%. Um, so now let's look at this one <clears throat> because that's different than the original one I had. So I'm going to reload this page. I'm going to go look at that actual gallery. <clears throat> and now you can see that it is blurring the images to the left and right. They are smaller and less opaque. So that's how you would um, change the unselected images. So I'm just going to unselect that. But like I said, by default, they'll all be the same size and opacity. And if you want this to stretch all the way across the screen, you do the same thing we did with the tiled. Just kind of make it full width, go to size and position, and hit the horizontal locking to be full. Um, and then you will have a full width gallery for your sliding gallery. So let's go look at that one. So there you go. I always like to have, so I'm going to get rid of this one and add in my one that I originally had. So again, for this gallery type, this lighting gallery, I always have a back to galleries button so that it can go back to whatever canvas you have that has your buttons there. I also like to have a next button so that people can manually say when they want to go to the next image. So to do that, you would just add a text layer and say next and then go over here on the right to click actions. 
You don't actually change, you don't create a link, you create an action. So you would set the action type to gallery. Um, it's gonna target gallery one, because that's by default what it's gonna be. And then you set the action to be next. And then if you have a previous button, you just say previous. <clears throat> so um, it's pretty, pretty easy to do. So let's go look at the third type, which is a single gallery, or simple gallery. <clears throat> All right, so I have it selected. So by default, I'm gonna turn this one off. And let's add in a gallery. So I'm gonna add my gallery. Um, for the canvas size for this, I do the same as the sliding gallery. I would make it at least 600 pixels high and just canvas type normal. <clears throat> so by default, when you add your gallery, go to gallery images. So by default, the gallery or the image is going to take the full space, space of the gallery. So if you want the aspect ratio of the image to stay the same, you have to change that. So click the gallery. On the right, go to gallery settings. And under here where it says size fill, you want to set that to contain because then it will contain the image in the gallery box that you've created. But don't forget, you have to do that on mobile as well. So I have this mobile gallery set up as well. And I want to set it to contain so that the image is contained in that box. Um, so that one's a pretty simple one. Um, you know, it just, you just scroll through one image um, at a time. Creating buttons can get complicated, which is why people tend to buy um, templates that already have them. But I'm going to show you just the basics of how they're set up. There's lots of different things that you can do. So you can have all of your buttons for your galleries in one canvas and then have them link to different canvases in your page. Or you could have all of your galleries in one canvas using different canvas views. So the way that I have this set up is I have my three gallery buttons on one canvas and then I have a, ga a canvas for each gallery type to showcase. So I'm going to show you how to do that because that's how this is set up. <clears throat> so I have this canvas set up already, right? So this is one button right here, this image is text, this is one button here, this image is text, and this is my third one here. <laughs> All right, so I want this button to link to gallery one because this is gonna be gallery one, right? And I went over to click actions, <clears throat> and I'm gonna say, I want this click, this picture to be linked to a canvas. What canvas? I want it to be linked to gallery option number one, this canvas here, because that's where I have my gallery number one. And then I'm gonna say that I will have an action. I want, when I click this button, I want show it to show canvas gallery one. That's another secret trick is you want to um, have your galleries hidden to start because otherwise they're just gonna show, right? So you want your butt buttons to be able to actually open the gallery. So to get them to do that, you have to make sure that all of your canvases that have your galleries are set to be hidden to start and make sure you check the checkbox on both mobile and desktop. And then you have to add an action to each of the buttons, show canvas, the type show canvas, and then you have to tell it which canvas. So I had this image, I said, I want it to link to a canvas. I want it to go to, can to gallery option one canvas, and I need to add an action to show that canvas. And I do the same exact link and action for my text layer here. So this is button number two. So similar thing. So I'm going to tell show it over here on the right under click actions. I want this image to link to a canvas. Where do I want it to go? I want it to go to canvas or gallery option two, because that is where I have my gallery two. And then I also need to set my action type to show canvas gallery option two, because by default I have it hidden. And I do the same link in action for the option two text here. <laughs> And then I would do the same thing for button three to show, you know, gallery canvas three and to add that action type to show the canvas. So that is how you set up buttons. Another option that is easier for you to do that I have done before and actually I do this on my own site is to have your buttons linked to different pages. So let me show you how to do that. So I'm going to open up my site and I actually have my port cell portfolio up to show many different pages. So each of my portfolio projects is its own page. And I do that for SEO reasons because I can be really purposeful about what I actually name this page. 
So I have all my buttons on one page. So if I go to my creatives portfolio page, like these are all buttons. Okay. But they don't link to any canvases. There's no actions. It's, it's a lot easier if you will. So I have, um, you know, I have this button for all grand events. I have the link type set to page and simply it goes to portfolio, the, the page that I have named portfolio dash all dash grand dash events dash branding dash wedding dash florist. And the reason I do that with dashes is because those words are SEO friendly. So someone could be Googling branding for wedding florists, and this might show as a search result because I have those key terms in the actual name. And then in the actual page SEO settings, so now I'm going to go over that page. So this button links to this page that I have set up over here. All right. So I have the actual page name itself with keywords. And then if I click over here on the right under SEO settings, I can even do different things here. So this is the actual SEO page title is, um, oh, and I didn't even set this one up right. This should be all grand events. And see, but I can even be more purposeful and like, you know, add wedding florist, wedding florist branding. Like you can be really specific about what you name your actual pages over here on the left. And then you can do all the SEO settings on the right as well, because those are searchable. So honestly, that's the easiest way to set up galleries um, is to have a different page for each one of them, um, because then you don't have to worry about hidden canvases and all that jazz. So yeah, so those are the three different types of galleries and how um, you use them and set them up. Thanks for tuning in this week, guys, to learn about all the different gallery options for your show at website. I'm looking forward to another tutorial next week, so make sure that you subscribe so that you'll be getting these, and make sure that you let me know in the comments with any video topics that you want to see. See ya!